Hey guys, thanks for coming in today. I've got Rachel and Kara here and we're going to talk about our research project that we're doing across the partnership called Drive to 95 and uh, what we're trying to do is drive the HCAP scores uh, to the 95th percentile uh, by using a special technology called the 2x2 two two method. So here we go. Uh, the learning objectives today as we teach our new grads and as they're onboarding or really any of our new folks, we want to be sure that they as we're going through this with them, that they know what D, D95 or Drive to 95 means. We want, want them to know what the 2x2 two two approach is. We want them to be able to name the two questions for the critical care department. And we'll have to make sure everybody's talking that uh, talk and, and saying those words. They need to be able to describe two uh, strategies to control pain and also two strategies to uh, teach about medication side effects. So the situation is, is the partnership does a pretty good job of with HCAP scores, but we're around the 75th percentile. I haven't been able to quite get that up uh, to the to the top 95th percentile. Uh, and we've had some moments where we've been really good, and we'll be green for a quarter, but then we come right back down the next quarter. So uh, what we're trying to do is to figure out why this is happening and then, of course, to correct that. Uh, so we called in the student group, and they came in, they took a look at us, and they said most uh, most. Uh, Circumstances when they see this, it's because of consistency or inconsistency in the staff performance. Usually around ADA, you will just acknowledge, introduce, duration, explain, and thank you, uh, rounding, and then keywords at key times as well. So that's what we're going to be working on. So why drive to 95? Well, HCAP scores are the, the hospital consumer's perception of the care that they receive. So we want to be sure that they perceive a very high level of care from us. If we get to the 95th percentile, it means we're really providing a very high level of care, and that's what we want to do. It also aligns our customer service to our mission, vision, values, uh, and goals, and you know, to provide exceptional care to every patient every day, not somewhat okay care every now and then. So we want to really link that. And then we also want, uh, to drive to the top 95th percentile because that's how we get them reimbursed. So there's a financial impact to the organization. And so any response other than always or yes, we do not get reimbursed. I have a quick question. Yeah, sure. What's the sample size? The sample uh, size for HCAPs? Yes. Uh, good question. Um, it depends on the unit that you work on, work in. In the in higher volume units such as postpartum, they, they will see somewhere around, you know, 50, 60, 70 persons a quarter. We only get about... 40 to 50 of the telemetry unit. So it just depends on, on, on the unit. Um, we'll take a look at those scores in a few minutes and I can show you um, a little better idea of that. So uh, the 2x2 two two method, which is what the research is based on, is we're going to see if this will drive us to the top 95th percentile. It basically means that you focus on two questions uh, on each unit. It's different per unit. And that you drive those two questions up by 2% by, by a set amount of time. And ours, we have until the end of the year, so December 2014. The questions for critical care are during this hospital stay, how often was your pain well controlled? And then the second one will be before giving any new medication, how often did hospital staff describe possible side effects in a way you could understand always? <laughs> so that's that's a pretty tough question right there. Okay, so here are metrics. Uh, I'm showing you just a brief look of, at our scores. That We have St. David's, telemetry, and IMC. And what you see across here is that uh, St. David's uh, is 66%, Tully's at 73%, you see IMC at 95%, so you're like, woo, look at IMC. But that's very misleading because that's only eight patients. Whereas in Tully, that's more, I believe we're at 42, 43, somewhere along in there. 40 to 50 is our normal range. And St. David's, an even bigger number, of course, overall. Uh, so uh, for question one, our goal is going to be to go from... Um, 73 to 75% and for communication about side effects we need to go from 55 to 57 and to me this is really important because 55% that means about half of our patients are going home not really understanding the side effects of their new medications mm -hmm. and so clearly clearly something we need to do for our patients. I have one other question about yeah, the sure. reimbursement. Yeah. So if a patient answers sometimes to one of these questions mm -hmm. we don't get reimbursed for anything or just for specific Things. Great question that I'm not sure of the answer of, but we'll look that up and we'll figure that out. You know, I'm not sure exactly how that ties back, but good question. I would think that, you know, I wonder if it's the percent always that we get reimbursed on. You know, how that whole candidate, like St. Saint, uh, Saint David's was 66%. I'm thinking that we would get reimbursed on 66% of our Medicaid pa Medicare patients for that quarter. Something yeah. along those lines is what okay. I think. Yeah. That's what okay. I think, but let's look it up together when we're done. Okay, so uh, question number one, page, pain management well controlled. 
Well, uh, it's an interdisciplinary approach. It's all hands on deck. You know, anyone who's in the room from the physical therapist, PCT, you know, they may say, I know that you got a couple of Vicodin earlier from Kara. You know, I want to make that, sure that your pain's well controlled. How are you feeling now? And, you know, everybody always tying it back to that, using those words, well controlled. Uh, the supervisor will be available for unresolved pain events. She'll go down, assess, uh, you know, uh, maybe uh, collaborate with the the nurse, maybe call the doctor, and then if we can't get these pa patients comfortable, track those patients and see what we can do. We're looking for some uh, similarities amongst those patients, commonalities, things we can do to get to work past that. The other thing is assessing nurses' beliefs and their attitudes around opiate tolerant patients. Uh, that's a very difficult group sometimes to control, and so we'll need to work with uh, nursing to make sure that they understand strategies to, to, fit, to work with that. We're going to include a pain in golden hour, which we already do. We're going to create a night shift pain plan. So that would mean that, uh, let's say Rachel's going to bed at, say, 9 o'clock. You've got pain medicine ready at 1030. You can have that. Do you want me to wake you up or do you want me to let you sleep? And you would get to decide and that gives you some control. Uh, and then we're going to include this in bedside shift report. Uh, we'll be validating the acceptable level of pain with the patient, setting realistic goals. Zero is not always realistic. Mm -hmm. We've had a big surgery. Uh, updating the whiteboard and uh, using our uh, pain medication got on the back of the map sheets. Uh, nurse leader will come in, ask if they've had to call for pain medicine. We should be proactively bringing it. And then uh, the other, ask, ask the patient to tell them other actions the staff have taken to control their pain. So control their pain, control their pain. <laughs> <laughs> and I just put a copy of our pain management guide that's on the back of the map sheets here for you guys to, to refer to. And then question number two is communication about medicine side effects. Um, really the concepts around this are using keywords at key times. I'm here to give you new medications. I want you to understand the purpose and side effects of this new medication. Using teach back, and I'll ask again, who, use, who teaches back? Or the, the, the patient. The, the patient, right. The nurse teaches, the patient teaches back. Uh, we'll do that during bedside report. We'll use the map sheet, circling the medicines, the purpose, and the side effects. Leave it with the patient. Refer to it, to it while you're giving uh, your medications, and then the nurse leader will also validate that we're doing that on the rounds. And then, why are we teaching about uh, medication side effects? I like, I like this slide. I left it in here. This is from Studio Group again. It manages the patient's safety. They know what to expect. It uh, validates their concerns about taking medicines, how it's going to make them feel. It tells them, it teaches them when to call their caregiver. You know, if they're a little dizzy, that's okay. If they nearly pass out, that's probably not so good. Mm -hmm. So, important that they know that. Increases compliance with their meds. And more importantly, it just keeps them out of the hospital and improves their clinical outcomes. And, and that's what we need to do is keep them out of the hospital. This is the medication purpose and side effects, again, just so that you can refer to that. And then on discharge, uh, review the importance of medication purpose and side effects one last time. Give them handouts, whatever teaching aids are appropriate for them. And then we're going to do our final safety check by calling them at home in a couple of days and do that post-discharge phone call. And again, we're going to ask, do you have any questions regarding uh, the purpose of your med medication and potential side effects? So. Uh, after you've done your teaching, um, certainly you have a, this is available for you to do that. But the questions that you want to be sure that the uh, the audience can answer is: Do they know what D95 means? If they can explain that, uh, why why it's important to focus on HCAP scores? Um, what are the two questions we will use for our project here in the critical care departments? And to uh, have them tell you two strategies for pain management, well control, and two strategies uh, for c communication about medications and side effects. Do you guys have any more questions? Mm -mm. Um, I had one question going back to pain control with people that are pretty um, opiate tolerant. Right. Um, if we're given a medication order, you know, every single hour, mm -hmm. you know, morphine Q1. Right. That's very difficult on telemetry because we've got five patients that right. might have similar orders or might. Mm -hmm. So. We can't titrate medications every right. hour on telemetry. We can't do neuro checks every hour. Is right. that an appropriate order for telemetry? Uh, it may or may not be, depending on the circumstance and situation. If it were me and I were, were the nurse, I would ask for a PCA, you know, where the patient yeah. could, could could do their own pump and set limits that way. The patient may have um, a, a better sense of their controlling their pain uh, and as opposed to the nurse doing that. And you're right, it's a huge burden when you have that. Uh, but I would... I think each situation would be a little bit different. Yeah, I guess. I just wondered if, you know, it would be an appropriate thing to ask if the patient's pain was really out of control, if we could move them to a and higher might, level of care. It might be appropriate. To IMC so that we can right. try to get that. Well, we have the control. IMC unit, and then we also have the high-intensity med surge unit upstairs. Yeah. So 
Yeah. It's not that we don't want to control their pain mm -hmm. if, if they're in that much, but, you know, we also can't be in five places at once. It's very time-consuming, I understand. So. Okay. okay. Here's my references, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.